Hello everyone, and welcome back to Game Break, the full coverage writer's presentation where we take a look at the plot and story behind some of our favorite video games. Will here, returning once again to Rapture in Bioshock 2. When we last left off, we had just used our camera skills to learn a new trick from one of those brutish splicers. And now we're gonna do a little bit of exploring, and then put it to the test. Oh look, a flower. The little sisters have been here, which means there must be a present waiting for me from Eleanor somewhere around here. You must find me. E excuse me? That sounded like... like bad news. What do you mean my heart is getting weaker? It doesn't sound good. Doesn't sound good at all. I do like... Oop. Hypnotize your foes! Laugh as they fight each other! Hooray for new plasmids! It's nice that Eleanor wants to help keep us alive, but... Why is our heart getting weaker in the first place? There's a, a, a detail there that's missing that I'd very much like to know as soon as possible. Or better yet, let's just find Eleanor and get out of here before something terrible happens. Aww, what a cute couple. <laughs> I suppose that I'm not associated with your kind. I want the red star. And now they're just fighting like an old married couple. Oopsie. The Black Dream, starring Sander Cohen, an experimental film, unlike anything you have ever seen before. Hey, it's our good buddy Sander Cohen, the crazy artist from Bioshock 1. You remember him? I sure do. He was rather crazy. I like the little tie-ins to the previous game. It really helps make this whole world feel like one world. baby. It's very steampunk if I must say so myself. I do like the upgrade there with the double barrel revolvers. He will be reborn. You should not have come. I see as the music stops and everything suddenly gets really eerie and creepy. Oh, really creepy. Because this doesn't have hideous trap written all over it. This must be Gracie's dressing room at the back end of the limbo room. That's it. We have to close down the limbo. Bomb goes off in that fancy place uptown and everybody panics. Pulls their money out of the banks. A whole city tugging on the same dollar bill. So the banks fold. And maybe one in ten got their savings out. Who's gonna come here me nightingaling about how broke they are? How am I gonna provide for little Eleanor? It's a repeat of the 1920s financial collapse before the Great Depression all over again. People panic, they pull their money out of the banks, money that's not really there, the banks collapse, businesses collapse. In this case, it was all because of the war, probably between Andrew Ryan and Frank Fontaine, considering a bomb went off somewhere. Speaking of traps, I'm not going to let anyone sneak up on me. But of course, the poor people, like Grace Holloway, were the ones that really suffered. This was probably the last place she could perform in. I guess there's no traps here. And even that she had to close down. God is in the people. 
Yeah, I know they were trying to oust Sophia Lamb as a communist, but crazy religious cult still feels more accurate than communism. Because even communism is more about a complete centralized government controlling everything. Sophia Lamb wants to kind of create more of an all-in-one family. Similar to communism, but different enough, I think. It's definitely bad. I really don't blame Grace for being so upset. She lost everything, and even when she was watching Eleanor, she had to worry about watching that little girl. Why she still blames us for Eleanor being taken and turned into a little sister is beyond me, but... I, while I do feel bad for Grace, I don't feel bad enough to not hunt her down and kill her if need be. Delta's prime concern is finding Eleanor. Anyone else is just collateral damage in his way. The Tin Daddy is not a man. It is half dog and half devil, made by Andrew Ryan to condemn our children to a walking death. Seems a bit harsh. Again, I don't know where she got that logic. I feel maybe in our... Either maybe in our past we were the ones that took Eleanor, or... Sophia Lamb is just saying that to get people on her side and against us. Nice trap there. That, that worked real well. You, you did really good on that one. Oh, and then you just run right through it and set yourself on fire. The, these splicers aren't exactly the most coordinated of enemies, I, I will say that. Hey, come back here! Come back here, I just want to drill you! That... <laughs> well, he thought it was funny. Heavens. Ominous laughter is never good. And, of course, the hypnotize probably works better when there's more than one splicer around. <laughs> I got to drill her after all. much of a defense for that ominous laughter. I was expecting something more. Wait a moment. This was the door that was blockaded earlier. The one that out, was out front of the Sinclair Deluxe. Now it's open and the barricade's gone? Someone's been busy. Perhaps the one who did the ominous laughter? Because that was a man and the splicers we fought in there were all women. Very curious. Just rev up that drill of yours and slam right through that pile of junk blocking your way. All right, let's see just how good this new drill move is. Oh, very effective. Oh, we're here all right. was on the top floor. Get on up there and persuade her to give you that override key. Well, that wasn't so difficult. And now we get a look at the Sinclair Deluxe. Baby Snatcher. I'm sure once upon a time it wasn't such a terrible place, right? Nah, I'm sure Sinclair kept it up to date and really secure and a wonderful place to live. 
Yeah, you're right, probably not. I know it's wrong to feel so fine right now, but I can't seem to quit this grin. Dr. Lamb came to tell me that Ryan's finally gonna lock her up. It's gonna cut the believers, and I should feel the same. But Sophia remembered that I, that I was barren, and she asked me to take care of her baby while she's gone. Baby Eleanor Lamb, gorgeous, clever little girl. I have a child now, and it's gonna put the whole world all right. Now things are starting to make a little bit more sense as to why Gracie was really so attached to little Eleanor. She couldn't have a child of her own. So when Sophia asked Gracie to take care of Eleanor for her, she got her chance to be a mother that she always wanted to be. And it also explains where Sophia Lamb went. And it's not a surprising at all, considering all the steps Andrew Ryan was taking to get rid of her. Eventually it would have worked and she got locked up. Perhaps they convinced the council that she was a communist. Or who the hell knows? Andrew Ryan wasn't exactly the kind of guy that do everything legally. But either way, he got Eleanor in jail. Or rather, Sophia. He got Sophia in jail. And little Eleanor ended up in Gracie's care. And what happened next? We're not quite sure yet. Somehow, Grace lost Eleanor, and she blames us. Oh, like, that's not ominous. That kind of made it worse. I mean, it's good to know we have a built-in flashlight, but this hallway is dark. We're definitely venturing into spooky territory once more. It wouldn't be a Bioshock game without some spooky parts like this. Shadows where the splicers can jump at us at any moment. Though I admit I feel the music is a little off. I admit, at this point I don't know why these intense violins are ringing in my ears, but... I had saved the game at a point and turned it off and turned it back on to play some more and... When I turned it off, there wasn't any intense music playing. When I turned it back on, the music was kicking in, so... Hello. I get the feeling it might have been a little bit of a weird mix-up when the game loaded back up. The Baby Snatchers headed up into the hotel family. He wants me so he can get to Eleanor. Tin Daddy feels no guilt. Tin Daddy feels no pain. But we are the family and we can teach him how. Brutal. She is not happy with us. She truly thinks we're some kind of unfeeling, ungodly monster. It just snatches babies away. Perhaps the music is appropriate and on purpose then, because this is kind of an intense final rush through this dark and creepy hotel to get to Grace Holloway herself. And the place is crawling with angry, bloodthirsty splicers. Just had to make sure. Some of the splicers like to play dead. Yes, I see you leading me deeper into the hotel. Oh. Never get the feeling you're being led into a trap. Where did he go? Where'd he go? There's nowhere else to go from here. Where the hell did he go? Oh, hey, a trap. Oh. Gotta love those. Ooh. Gotta love those fire nova tonics. So much for that trap. Watching you hurt shouldn't give me such a lifty monster. But I'm not as clean on the inside as the doctor. I'll take my joy where I can. 
She is truly bitter with us. True hatred. You know you hate someone when you actually take joy in their pain and suffering. And it's sad to think that the once great lounge singer Grace Holloway has been reduced to such a state. I don't quite blame her, but it's still sad. Unfortunately, she has the key to proceed forward, so we must deal with her. And no amount of guilt is going to stop us. Ah, another one of those shrines. People sacrificing themselves to the little sisters just to create more Adam. We're definitely into freaky cult territory. No doubt in my mind at this point. Another ambush. Another horribly foiled ambush. Blood divides us, monster. It's blood that makes us strangers. But thanks to Dr. Lamb, we're all family now. One people, one cause. You can stop this heart, bleed this old body, but you cannot end the family. And as for you, Tid Daddy, you're dying alone. Now that is a cruel wish upon anyone, to die alone. But it also says how united this family of Sophia Lambs is. She's truly united the people to believe that they are all part of one greater cause. There is no individuality like Andrew Ryan purported. This is all one big single mesh made up of many parts and these people will do anything to keep it working and to see, Sophie, see Sophia's lamb dream become reality Andrew Ryan told me that in Rapture it didn't matter where you came from Bunk. Bunk. Times got hard, and all our old bigotries bubbled right back up. But Dr. Lamb showed us that down under the skin, down under the money, down under our very name, we are family. It's still not surprising to see how Sophia Lamb gained such a following. Andrew Ryan did promise a lot, and then when things got tough, None of those promises came true, and people ended up suffering worse down here than they ever could have on the surface. And when Sophia Lamb promised them salvation, well, who wouldn't say no to that? Another day waiting for Harry to come home. I told him not to speak up against Mr. Ryan's policies, and now he's missing! just never came home. I went by the bookstore, and all his books are gone, too. I don't know what to do. Now I have to deal with that awful Sinclair just to have a roof over my head. You know, for how opposed to communism Andrew Ryan was, he certainly liked to disappear people in the night. Very similar to the Russian Gestapo of the Soviet era. Kind of irony in there. Someone was a fan of butterflies. Though in this town right now, it seems a lot of people were fans of butterflies. Very big fan of butterflies. That's quite the collection. Caterpillar, the 
doesn't spin a cocoon. It just grows armor on the inside before the change. It is us. To wear a butterfly is to support Dr. Lamb and the family. Before long, Rapture will split wide and take wing. Imago is coming. The butterflies are starting to make more sense as the symbolism is kind of spelled out for us. Specifically these blue butterflies that are everywhere and their apparent unique metamorphosis action. Grace's room is just up ahead. Now, she's been sending all manner of unkindness your way, so I'm not particular as to how you take that key away from her, but she's old, and this grudge against you was based on a misunderstanding. Almost sounds like Sinclair doesn't want us to kill Grace. Even after all she's thrown our way. Perhaps the man has a heart after all? Can't con a con, man. As much as this guy was making off of Sinclair, I wouldn't be surprised if Sinclair was taking whatever syringes he was making and selling them for double again to whoever would buy them. And I doubt that guy ended up on top ever again. Plus, who knows what was in those syringes and those pinpricks. Monster. I, because your kind has killing in its nature, and you, because there's no way the family will let you stroll out alive with that key. How much of an ultimatum? She wants to make sure we die, and she doesn't care if she dies in the process. In fact, ooh, how nice. She's certain we're going to kill her. It is a cute little room, though. This is definitely Eleanor's room when she was staying here with Grace. Aww, a cute. And a lovely family portrait, no less. Certainly nicer than the rest of this apartment. And here's Grace's room. But still no Grace. She must be hiding somewhere. I can't even imagine what it'd be like to come home and find the little girl you're raising is just gone. The entire house is ransacked. That also means someone came in here specifically to take Eleanor. Someone did take Eleanor from Grace Holloway. As far as we know, it wasn't us. Ow. But someone did take her and turn her into a little sister. I swear, that looks like a secret passage, so there just has to be a way to open it somewhere in here. Ooh, first aid kit, how'd I miss that? Nothing in this closet. How charming. Must be something. Poster? Aha! Behind the poster. Always behind the poster. Now let's go say hello to Grace. Let's 
filthy. Hello, Grace. I know what you're here for. Go on, take it. I won't have you touching me. Dr. Lamb trusted me to care for her child. And I tried. But baby Eleanor disappeared. And then one day, I see her walking with you. Looking wrong. And when I tried to hold her, you knocked me down. Broke my jaw. So I'm ready, baby snatcher. Come on in and finish the job. So she did see us with Eleanor after Eleanor became a little sister. Your call, friend. Grace is unarmed, for what it's worth. She did put us through quite a hell ever since we arrived at Popper's Drop. But we have the override key. That is what we came for. And no. No, we're not gonna do it. What are you doing? Come on, you goddamn monster. Do what you always do. Come on! No. We're not a monster. You're a bigger man than I am, Chief. Maybe next time she'll think twice about pointing fingers before all the facts are in. Now, let's be on our way. Eleanor's waiting. We've got bigger fish to fry. We don't need Grace Holloway's death on our conscience. You had me under a gun, yet you just walk away. No monster alive turns the other cheek. No monster does that. A thinking man does that. That's right. We are no monster. Not anymore. I know that Dr. Lamb is no liar, but she's got to be wrong about you. Doesn't seem right now, letting you walk into that bushwhack waiting outside. I can't call off the family, but I can whisper a bit and improve your odds. Yeah. Looks like we might have made the right choice. Grace is starting to question everything she's heard from Sophia Lamb. And it looks like she might make it easier on us for the inevitable ambush waiting downstairs. And you know there's an ambush waiting downstairs, because there's only one way for us to go to get back to where we need to be. And that's through the lobby downstairs. At least they gave us this little shortcut so we don't have to take the long way back around. These whirlybirds are custom jobs by an old friend. I'm afraid this is all I can do for now. Seems we've gained her trust, and she's supporting us now over Lamb. Hey, Much rather have an ally than a corpse. I'm willing to bet there would have been a lot more splicers down here otherwise. And we certainly wouldn't have had the help of those two drones. And speaking of help, might as well add a turret to the mix. And now we just let my little pets clear up the mess for me. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank you for joining me for this video. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to hit the like button, and of course, continue the conversation below in the comments section. Just avoid spoilers, or my turrets will have to come after you next. And as always, feel free to subscribe to our channel for more great videos from us here at Full Coverage Writers. And until next time, get out there, be creative, and be awesome.